Coming up on this episode of the Bermuda Triangle. You know, it's just a lot of history and Montana history and Montana history of brewing. I like to come and drink beer. <laughs> That's my hobby. Yeah. And yeah. You sit down and then you say, you know, you're so close together. Where do you come from and where I come yeah. from and strike up a whole conversation. Scary. Super scary. They're everywhere. Montana outdoor and beer enthusiasts and welcome to the first Beer Muta Triangle. The Beer Muta Triangle is a travel feature visiting three breweries in each episode, focusing on the Montana experiences and places you might want to visit in your travels. In this first episode, we'll be traveling from here at the Missoula International Airport to the Phillipsburg Brewery, with a few stops along the way. We will then head up and over Scalcoho Pass, landing at the base of one of Missoula's defining land features, Lolo Peak. Let's go! We're here at our first stop today, Phillipsburg Brewing Company, also known as The Springs. There is a lot of history here at The Brewing Company, and I am so excited to learn more about it. Ryan? I'm ready. It's just a lot of history and Montana history and Montana history of brewing. The whole business district of Phillipsburg is a national historic district. The hop tower that you see behind me here is part of that historical district. Well, the shack is the original Kroger brew house, or the, the brewer's house where him and his family lived. The reason for Kroger's brewery starting here was because of the springs. He had originally come into the area and was doing some mining, found the spring complex here, which provided him good brewing water, and Phillipsburg was becoming a booming mining community at that time, so miners and beer tend to go together. Hi, I'm here with Nolan Smith, and we're talking about one of Montana's greatest resources, water. Nolan, tell us a little bit about this room. So this is the collection system for uh, 11 mountain springs that emanate on the property. These are uh, two of the larger cisterns that we have here. Uh, the spring produces 300 gallons a minute of pure water. The town of Phillipsburg takes water from the springs, blends it with Fred Burr Lake water to make up the municipal water, and then we utilize that same water at both breweries to brew our beer. We're in quite a cold room, and it feels good on a summer day like this, but you tell bet. me about why we're here and what it does for the beer. So at Phillipsburg Brewing, we insist that our beer is kept cold at all times. We put so much effort into using the best ingredients, the whole leaf hops, the mountain spring water. We feel in order to preserve our product the best, uh, we insist that it's always kept cold. So we keep it cold in our cooler. Uh, we insist that our distributors keep it cold uh, when they've got it on the shelves because uh, we want a superior product to be, be in the customer's hands. Nolan, we are inside what I would normally call a canning room because we've got a lot of aluminum around us, but this is technically a bottling line, is that right? Yes, it is. We're uh, the only craft brewery in the country that utilizes these Alumatech bottles on a production scale. This is our only platform that we use. Uh, these are built by Ball Corporation down in uh, Golden, Colorado. We share the production line with, with Coors, who's the other principal that uses these bottles. Uh, so screw them on screw them off on and off on and off yeah yeah once once the beer's in there uh it's secured down with the cap and uh, a pilfer ring and then once you break that seal you can open them and close them all day long mm -hmm. so i'm guessing since these are pretty unique bottles you've got to have a pretty unique bottling line so i know you had a hand in this literally and figuratively yes. why don't you tell yeah. us a little bit about what we got going on behind us so since no one else is using these on a production scale or that would share us any technology with us. We basically had to assemble all this equipment ourselves. We, we got a custom built uh, capper from uh, Mahin in the Tri-Cities, a uh, custom built uh, capper from Aral in Italy, and then we had to make these things work together. Uh, we had all the belts were custom built from an outfit named Pride in Hollister, California, who does the conveying for Coors. 
Uh, but we basically got the components together and had to and had to make it run ourselves. We couldn't go to Portland or Denver and say, "Hey, show us your line." And mm -hmm. well, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? That was that was not in the cards. So uh, it took us quite a while to get it together and get it operational. But obviously, it's it's worth it in the end. Absolutely. I mean, this is so fun. I I actually really like these. Uh, these bottles because uh, you can you can one you can have them on the river you don't have to worry about glass you can close them up drink a little bit here take them somewhere else yeah. you don't waste the beer you don't get it diluted by river water or anything like that and they're recyclable yes yeah right yeah now. excellent coming up next I am drinking otter water it's just fun it's a fun atmosphere I love the people what do you have here on tap that maybe we didn't see over there what I like about this beer and all your beers is the, the, the commitment to local. The Beer Muta Triangle Series is sponsored by First Montana Bank and Lithia Ford of Missoula. This leg of the Beer Muta Triangle is back thanks to these sponsors. First Montana Bank. Redneck Sausage. and Lithia Ford of Missoula. Well, we just finished up with the Springs, and now we're here at the brewery itself where it all happens. But first, it's time for lunch. And where else would we go but the Sunshine Station, famous for their chicken wings and dollar bills stapled to the ceiling. Uh, we'll have some wings, and I'll have a hay bag half of please. And half of that Can I have a razoo? Absolutely. We'll get that right out. Thanks. And originally, the guy that built this place, it was called the Way Station. And I thought about one time changing back to that because you can't have just one. But the Sunshine Station has been here and we give away a free drink every day the sun doesn't shine. Honest to goodness. And it only happens about 8 to 13 times a year. After he did that promotion, it got picked up by Stars and Stripes. which got picked up by AP and all the big newspapers. So that's how it became the Sunshine Station. With our local brewery, we have all four beers that they have on tap. We have all four of them. I think we're the only bar that does that. So uh, the Razu, what you're having is a very nice fresh beer. I think you're having the Haybag Hefeweizen. I, you gotta love that name, Haybag, huh? <laughs> all award winners, they do very well at all the competitions. Their, their beer is, is very, very well known. And so uh, they're all through the Southwest and, and they're getting bigger and bigger and better every year. Luckily, it's only a stone's throw away. We're here at the original Phillipsburg Brewing Company and all that talk about beer has made me thirsty. Me too. One of the main ingredients is our water. So we have great local water here in Phillipsburg, which helps us be able to brew all the different styles of beer that we eat, brew. Mm -hmm. And then the other main component that we source locally is our, our malt. Our base malt all comes from Great Falls, um, from Malt Europe, where one of the largest malting facilities in the world is located. So we're really lucky to be able to use all that malt that's grown up on the bench um, in our product. Um, and we look forward to hopefully using some more hops that are being grown locally in Montana. That, that industry is just starting, so we hope to be able to use some of those in our product as well. The experience of just seeing what's out there, you know, I love beer, I want to taste what other things exist, you know. This one is so unique with the fresh raspberries, it's not that fakey fruit, it's delicious, it's refreshing, it's summer, it's Really a pale ale is my go-to beer, and I just had a really hoppy beer called Tramway, right? Yeah, and it was great. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have here that maybe you don't have over there at the facility itself? Certainly, so we have four beers that we produce up at the Springs. Mm -hmm. We have the three that go into the bottles, as well as the Razu Raspberry Wheat, which we're about to enjoy. And then down here, our lead brewer and recipe developer tries to have around six to eight additional rotating taps of seasonals and specialties. So right now, including those main four, we have 12 beers on tap. You can come and you can get a beer to go, take it to Jim Mountain and mine right here on the street, or you can go to their actual mountain outside of town. And that's a lot of fun to actually be in the outdoors at the mountain. It's been a fun time in Phillipsburg today. We're actually going to take Tiffany's advice and we're going to see Jim Mountain. Coming up next. I got a pink one. The Beer Muta Triangle Series is sponsored by First Montana Bank and Lithia Ford of Missoula.
Whenever you see this logo, go to our website, BermudaTriangleMT.com to see this scene in virtual reality, powered by Samsung. And here we are today, you are in the Sapphire Mountains. I now know why Tiffany referred us to Gem Mountain. Look at all these folks having a great time. I'm looking for sapphires. The sapphires will look like glass. They can be any color of the rainbow. over there because I got two. I can, yeah, they're blinding me. <laughs> I can't see because they're so pretty. This is a, this is a serious matter because we're going to see who has the highest weight. Uh, total so we weight. better take care of that first. Yeah. And the largest. Yeah, and okay. The largest. We gotcha. were going to, yeah, I forgot about that part. Okay. The largest, mm -hmm. yeah. 18.3. 18.3. Okay. Eighteen point three. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean house. Uh, right we're, now. No, we're done here. Let's go. Twenty four point three. Wow. Close. Twenty four point seven three. Whoa. Good job. I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Ryan may say it's beginner's luck, but I took home the most and largest sapphires. And although we are sad to go, we need to get up, go over the pass, and on our way to Lolo. What a stunning waterfall. We have to stop and take this in. Well, we made it over Scalcoho Pass and we've driven up the Bitterroot Valley. Now we've made it to Lolo Peak Brewing Company and we're gonna end the day with yet one more activity. I hear they have a great volleyball court here. So we're gonna go see what kind of trouble we can get into. That was a lot of fun. That was a good game of volleyball. What I like about Lolo Peak Brewing Company is they make the beer here on the premise and it travels maybe 10 feet before we're drinking it. Mm -hmm. So they serve out of something called bright tanks instead of kegs. We've seen kegs, we've seen kegs at parties. We've seen people do keg stands. This is a little different. These are larger holding tanks in a chilled environment and it keeps the beer fresh and it keeps it cold and it comes through the tap handles. But actually, I've just seen Rad walk in and he's gonna be able to tell us a whole lot more about what happens at Lolo Peak Brewing Company. Well, let's go do that. Let's do it. What is it about Lolo Peak Brewing and their approach to beer that maybe sets them apart from others? Well, you know, our whole approach is when we came into Lolo uh, was the idea of approachability. Everyone can come here and find a beer they enjoy. And it's not really stretching people's boundaries, but to produce a great product that's approaching. Rad, what can you tell us about Saisons? So, uh, Saisons are a French farmhouse out French, Flanders, Flemish, that whole area of the world. And the idea was, is they were the beers brewed late winter, spring for the workers and the people during the summertime. So you're looking for a lower alcohol, a little more effervescent, really crisp, clean. It's a summertime beer. So that's why you shouldn't see saisons. You know, people like they shop for a saison. Like, why isn't it six percent or seven percent? Like, oh, like a lot of the craft beer, you're looking at something at four, five, four, eight, five, two, lower alcohol. So it's a really enjoyable, sessionable type of beer. I really don't like beer much, so I'm trying to cut down. But I heard that they have really good beer, so I had to come try. It's just a nice, casual place to come after you do something and have some food and relax and chat. Have some good, great beer. Ryan, what a great day. We had so much fun today. So what's on the docket for tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to Kettle House Brewing Company where we will continue the adventure. Fantastic, cheers. Cheers. Coming up next. What was that? I mean, what's, what's more fun than that? This leg of the Bermuda Triangle is back, thanks to these sponsors. First Montana Bank. Gem Mountain, and Lithia Ford of Missoula. I'm an off-road enthusiast, you know, I love Jeeps, and I think a lot of other people do. 
you know, so an open top Jeep Wrangler, I mean, what's, what's more fun than that? Pub crawlers is something we started um, to offer more people options to, to get from brewery to brewery. We got a, a ton of breweries in this town, a lot of bars, a lot of cool events that we can go to. All we, all we want is people to be safe. I mean, there's to, to have an opportunity to actually enjoy the entire night and not have any risk of, of having a DUI or an accident or something like that, I mean, it's, it's definitely the better option. We're on the final stretch of the Beer Muta Triangle, and we're back in Missoula here at the Strong Water Surf Shop. We just talked to KB, Luke, and Grant, and they're gonna take us river surfing. I'm ready to go. Me too. I loved it. I'm gonna do it again. Super scary. Very fun, but super scary. I did it once. I can say I did it once. They did good. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't even get over to the uh, wave there, uh, but they were brave. They did good. They uh, gave it a shot. Nobody got swept down the river too far. It was fun. And then when you floated, when you got, when you rolled off, the board kind of drugged you. It's heavy, so it kind of felt like I was going to float to Lolo. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get on feet. But I was on the board, and there was me and water and the board. And uh, but uh, next time, next time it'll go. We're here at the Northside Kettle House, and we're ready to get a beer. I'm ready for a cold smoke. is the beer editor for Draft Magazine, craft beer fan. It's a little bit like being an editor at any magazine. You're putting together uh, stories, trends, interesting things you've experienced, a lot of travel and food stuff as well. Um, but I'm also a certified beer judge, so um, it's about evaluating beers that are really tasty, telling the stories of awesome breweries across the country and here in Montana, um, and basically, you know, sharing the really cool stories of breweries, what makes them unique, what beers are delicious, sharing that with readers. What an IPA is. What does IPA sure. stand for? Uh, it stands for India Pale Ale. And there are all kinds of ideas about what the India portion of the IPA refers to. Generally accepted that um, beers were traveling through some British trading companies in the Indian subcontinent. Back in the day, historically needed to be hopped a lot to preserve their flavor, keep them from going bad. And that is why IPAs are the hoppiest of beer styles and why Americans are pretty crazy about them these days. So here we are in this beautiful, beautiful building, uh, Kettle House North. Spots. It is. It's uh, it's fascinating. Just on the north end of town, yep. uh, near I ninety. But you've actually done a little bit of writing about this for Draft Magazine, Indeed. covering a couple of things. Yeah. What's the most uh, recent story that you covered on behalf of Kettle House? Yeah. So I was lucky enough to come out here to um, Kettle House, uh, met up with the crew at the Northside Tap Room, and then we actually went out to Bonner to see the new amphitheater that's being built out there. Uh, but they, they did a little something special here recently. What's this yes, collaboration do? Yeah, so that was another awesome thing I got to come see happen here was a collaboration brew with a brewery called Gravity out of Colorado. So there is a collaboration beer fest that happens in Colorado every year, and Gravity chose Kettle House to collaborate with them. Really? And yeah, because you get to awesome. pick, you get to pick an out-of-state brewery. They picked Kettle House, okay. and uh, both. So Gravity came here to brew what I would maybe say is the first very fancily hopped craft malt liquor I've ever <laughs> seen brewed. So that's almost an oxymoron there. I thought it was until I saw it happen. Oh, uh, so yep, two breweries work together. 
And they packaged it in 40s, of yes. course. Yeah, it's fun to come to work every day and make beer. Um, it makes myself happy, it makes customers happy. Who doesn't like a good beer? Right, we want to know about your passport. Ah, I'm happy ah. you asked. I have the Montana Brewery passport, yes. and I tell you, you know, the, you don't need a lot of motivation to go to a brewery because you've got beer, very good beer. But I founded this to go with the Montana beer book that I wrote several years ago. And I'm, I'm a sucker for passports like this. So I've got all 74 breweries that we have in the state of Montana, which is astounding. Holy cow. So we're like number two in the nation mm -hmm. for breweries per capita. So they're all in here and there is a custom stamp for every single brewery in the state. And you get that to go there. you designed? Yep, designed, gave it to them, and everyone is unique. And you get it right there. So you visit your brewery, you get your stamp, you give them a rating, you talk about the beers that you have. So I would put my hemp red ale from Kettle House Brewing Company there, and I would say super duper delicious, <laughs> or has a nice hop aroma, whatever it is. You get into whatever detail that you wanna do. But if you need a couple of tips, I've got a whole little section on how to taste beer. You nice. read through this and you're a beer expert. That's awesome. But these have been super well received. I've had uh, many people that have already completed their passport. That means they've traveled all around the state of Montana, seeing the great sights. And I think that's really what it was about. You know, the brewery part was fun, but there's so much to see out there. I tell you, as soon as I get one of these printed up, it's almost out of date because a new brewery is opening. It's almost every week a Why new brewery opens up. Why am I not in there? Exactly. Why yeah. am I not in there? How, can you send me a cutout of this one page? <laughs> but they do, but they share their stories. They yeah. talk about what they've done or they send pictures. Uh, I have a hashtag MTBrewPassport, mm -hmm. and you get on Instagram and you see people's oh, adventures. They love that. They love it. They're I bet there they with their it. friends. Good. They're giving it as gifts. So it is. And it's, uh, you know, we can have a lot of fun at breweries. We can sit, talk, hang with our friends, enjoy, uh, enjoy a beer after a fun day of adventuring. Absolutely. But the adventure to get there is part of the fun. Thanks for watching this episode of the Bermuda Triangle. Check out our website, BermudaTriangleMT.com, to watch current episodes, learn about new ones, and special features not found in today's show. The Bermuda Triangle was created by Brand Edge Marketing and produced by Gravity Media Productions. The Beer Muta Triangle Series is sponsored by Remember, keep your adventures alive by enjoying responsibly.